Springs Radio Real Estate Show. I'm Cheryl Garlock with Colorado Front Range Properties, your host. Okay, we're getting that right here today. Here, my very special guest today. I have two of them, actually, you guys. Okay, I have, first of all, Andy Shin with AY Realty. And Andy is a star at property management. I've got to tell you, he really does know his stuff. And the reason he knows his stuff is because he really focuses on the single family environment. And then my other very special guest, of course, is my lovely granddaughter, Miss Kenley Randall. Thank you, Kenley, for being on the show today. I appreciate it. It was called, uh, you know, bring the grandkids to uh, Grandma's show here today. So I'm having a lot of fun. I get to do that. Anyway, Andy, I want to talk with you about this nonprofit organization that you've got going. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you bet, Cheryl. It's called the Fountain and Shelton Partnership. And you know, we've talked about this before. The, yeah. That, that area, Fountain and Shelton, here in Colorado Springs, is one of the highest crime rates. It the is. The highest gun violence crime rate in the state of Colorado. In the state. In the I, state. I thought that might yeah. be the case. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you something. The uh, the police department is doing a fantastic job over there. In fact, you know, they, they don't run uh, advertised stats all the time, but I'm sure they've already already yeah. seen progress there. It's just a, a different feel when you go over there. But what our nonprofit's doing is we're working with the police department and landlords and business owners out there as well as residents out there to try and make that a, a, a lower frequency crime area. And uh, there's a lot of things that we're doing as far as helping with some of the aesthetic appeal of some of the properties that are really getting run down over there. Uh -huh. We want to change that. We want to work with owners and landlords to, to change that feel uh, over there. And, and it also comes down to uh, renter screening and making sure that um, that we're doing appropriate screening when we place people into to rental homes over there and there's such a concentration of population there that uh, this is kind of a migration uh, it takes a while to happen to make all yeah, these changes it sure does but it, uh, it takes everybody <laughs> getting involved and um, I wanted to share I wanted to talk about it today uh, briefly because I wanted to invite folks to our our meeting uh, oh, when is that yeah it's it's the second and the fourth Tuesday every month, second and fourth Tuesday, 3 p.m., mm -hmm. and it's at the Sand Creek Division of the Police Department, which is on Academy Loop, right off of uh, Academy and Fountain uh, Boulevard. All so, right, so tell us when that is again and where. You bet. So it's the second and fourth Tuesdays, 3 p.m., lasts about an hour, and it's every month, So, uh, and folks have an open invite to just go ahead and come on over, and they've got a big conference room. It's there at the Police Department, Sand Creek Division. That's on Academy Loop, and it's right off you of know, Academy. And I think, I think if you are a property owner over there, you definitely want to take advantage of this opportunity to get involved there because uh, it, it, it means, it means a, a big return versus a little or no return you know, on your investments in that area there. So you want to get involved there That's and right. find out what this uh, nonprofit group is doing there. Again, so that is, again, the second and... Second and fourth. Second and, uh, and fourth Tuesdays. You know, it could be property owners, as you mentioned. That's perfect. It could also be residents of that area. Yes. Or it could be anybody who does business. So think about oh, small business owners. Absolutely. Um, just uh, just come on over to the meeting, and I think you'll enjoy it. And love to have people involved. That's great. That's great. All right, let's now go ahead and talk about the technology that property managers are using to help owners and renters. What kind of technology things are you guys into these days? Well, I'll tell you, the last few years has been exciting in the property management industry because, um, you know, property management, maybe that industry has been a little bit behind in, in terms of keeping up with technology. You know, a few years ago, everybody, uh, you know, was using Excel spreadsheets for their, their rent owner statements and that sort of thing, but it's really stepped up and there's a lot of products available now. So for a, a rental owner, they could expect to uh, receive professionally done statements that are sort of automated. They could also expect to be able to log in to uh, an owner portal. Oh, the fact is account. really good, Andy. Yeah, absolutely, and, and so it gives a, a little bit more freedom to be able to, to do those types of things. From a renter's side, maybe even more so, because uh, you know, think about how renters normally would be able to pay rent. Well, now that they've got online options, they can do electronic fund transfer, credit card payments online. Uh, they can apply for a home online, somebody remote who's out of state and sees, yeah. you know, they, they can see a ton of photos on a property, maybe even a video walkthrough of a property. Now they can go online, do the application, pay online, take care of everything remotely in a very sort of seamless way. Oh, well, I think that technology is essential, too, is, uh, you know, if you're a property owner and you're out there renting the property there, uh, you want to be able to go ahead and track the movement, you might say, and be able to access what's really going on and how a property management company is handling your property there. So, that's I mean, right. th that's a really big reason to be involved in, in that respect there, and especially if you're an out-of-state owner. 
Yeah, and if you want to you know, have that access to the property, also you may have a, a company that you're working with, you know, like us, doing video walkthroughs, and you may have access to be able to see the video walkthrough of the home when somebody moves in and moves out. So That's like, true. And you're out of state, maybe you haven't seen the home in years, uh, what a great way to take a look at the house. Uh, absolutely. Now let's talk a little bit about from the rental perspective here as far as getting security deposits and return. How do they make sure that they do the best job they can to get their security deposit returned? Yeah, you know, uh, if, if I'm a renter, that I, I'm going to be concerned about that. And one thing I would do is I would talk to, before I moved, I'd talk to the landlord or property manager and say, what do I need to do from your perspective to get a full return on security deposit? Because you want to know exactly what they're going to look for when they come in after you've moved out. And so many renters end up losing part of their deposit on, on things like a cleaning fee or a carpet cleaning because they didn't realize uh, what they had to do exactly when they when they moved out so right do you guys give people like kind of a cleaning list or a punch list so to speak of what they need to do maybe right before they move out there so they're prepared yeah just recently actually we put together a document because we were getting these questions sometimes but you'd be surprised how few renters actually ask you uh, and then sometimes somebody's surprised after the fact and you don't want that to happen so yeah we did put together one pager and it's really about some of the detail cleaning things people sometimes miss like the you know, cleaning the blinds and cleaning the appliances, the refrigerator, uh, those sorts of things. The and window sure tracks. That, yeah, well, exactly, <laughs> and, and making sure you do everything. You know, I'd always tell a renter, you know, bring a professional in because they're going to know exactly what to, what to clean. But if you want to do it yourself, make sure you know exactly what has to be done so you don't get charged that cleaning fee after you move out. That's right. Now let's switch gears back to the owner again as far as uh, documenting the condition of the home. How do they document the condition of the home, and, and what are, what is your advice on that? Well, that's the kind of the other side of it. So now if the owner is going to retain part of the security deposit, what do they need to do to make sure they've covered themselves and that they can actually make the deductions? And uh, I always talk about a checklist. They need to have a written checklist that's signed by the renter, that the renter signed and said, yes, the house was clean, there was no damage to this, this, this. You know, we use a three-page checklist that goes through everything. A three-page um, checklist? Yeah, you bet. So, wow, so that's significant. And, and the other, it is, and the other thing uh, is a, a video walkthroughs. Uh, you know, we talked about technology, and that's that's something companies have started doing recently is video walkthroughs of the property. And it's not going to catch everything. You want to have that checklist, signed checklist. But the video is a nice uh, before and after comparison, especially if there is damage. It's very easy to line the videos up and say, well, this is what it was like before, and here's what it was like after. That's pretty dramatic. Yeah, that is, that is. And I think you tell your prospective tenants there that before, you know, they actually sign and rent the property there, that here's how we're taking care of the property and here's what you can expect. Yeah, and even from a renter's side, uh, you know, the renter themselves should do some documentation. I think, pictures when you I think they should. Really quickly here, we only have a few seconds here left, but I know that you heard some nightmare stories about an eviction in New York. I'll tell you, and I, yeah, and I wanted to address uh, because people get scared of evictions, and I, that makes a lot of people be afraid to be landlords. Colorado is really a straightforward process. It's not like it is on the coasts. Well, we'll have to talk more with Andy about that when we return to more of the Springs Radio Real Estate Show. But if you want to know more about what Randy is up to there, 719-321-7600. We'll be right back with more.